This is the Kia EV6. And it's what you get when you get the best of a crossover and the performance of a hot hatch. Welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. So if you are new here, I do appreciate you hitting that subscribe button though. It's completely free, but makes a huge difference to a growing YouTube channel like this one. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to be telling you of a new feature in the 2023 variant, which makes, which makes such a huge difference over the previous year models. Now, let's get started. This is the Kia EV6. It is built on the E gmp platform now for the attentive ones and for the regular viewers of the channel you know we've seen this platform before in fact it is found in the hyundai ionic 5 the baby or big brother of this vehicle you decide now this electric only platform puts the battery in the middle of the vehicle and pushes those wheels to the far corners of the car which thus allows for excellent interior cabin space you wouldn't get this on an internal combustion engine vehicle. You would be more confined the space that, that's taken up in the front and down the middle of the vehicle by the working components of the car. But not in this car, because this car is maximizing the advantages of the EV architecture. And it's not only this car which is using this eGMP platform. As we said, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, Hyundai Ioniq 6, and even the Genesis GV60 all share this eGMP platform. So Hyundai and Kia are developing their own electric motors for this platform. It's a nice touch and not something every automaker is doing. We've seen a few EVs on the channel where the motor is being bought from a third party. Not the case here. They are building their own permanent magnet synchronous motors in this case. Predominantly, this is a rear wheel drive vehicle with that motor at the rear of the car. However, there is a dual motor option as well, which adds a second motor to the front of the car. The design thus allows for a front or a front boot, which does get a bit smaller if you're opting for the dual motor variant. Now the single motor delivers 225 horsepower, 350 newton meters of torque. The dual motor goes up to 302 horsepower and 605 newton meters of torque. Now don't let the silence fool you because electric delivers quite a punch. In fact, this Kia EV6 in the dual motor variant can be specced up such that it can deliver 500 and 76 horsepower. Now that's enough horsepower to accelerate this vehicle from zero to a hundred kilometers per hour in just over three seconds. How fast is that? Well, if you line it up on the straight with a Ferrari Roma and a Lamborghini Huracan Spider rear wheel drive, the Kia EV6 comes out as the winner. Now all the EV6 come with a single speed transmission as is commonplace in, uh, in EVs, and that is at a gear ratio of 10, 65 is to one. Now let's talk a bit about this battery pack, which of course is an integral part of this car. Now starting with the cells themselves, the small individual battery cells, those are coming from SK Innovation, a long-term battery supplier of Kia and Hyundai. Now those cells are in the pouch format as you're seeing at the moment and they are lithium ion cells of the NCM battery chemistry which means they are made up of nickel, cobalt and manganese which is a popular choice at the moment with electric vehicles. Now those cells stacked together make up modules and those modules stacked together make up the battery pack found under the passenger compartment. Now, two battery size options to choose from here, a 58 kilowatt and a 77 kilowatt battery pack. The smaller battery pack is 24 modules, which in total has 288 of those individual battery cells. The larger pack, the 77.4 kilowatt, is 32 modules and 384 individual battery cells. 
I have noticed one very interesting thing about the battery warranty. So here in Europe, the battery is covered by a seven year warranty, which is great. It gives you peace of mind that for seven years you had to definitely don't need to worry about the battery. Now, obviously I've told you on the channel, the battery, especially in conditions like Malta, will last far longer than that, as we've already seen from history. So this is not just me guessing, but we've had electric cars here in Malta for 12 years and the results speak for themselves. These batteries are going to last. Now, the interesting thing I found about this particular car is that in the US market, Kia is offering a 10 year warranty on that pack. Why is it different? Well, at first I thought there are different chemistries at play, but it's not the case. It is the same battery pack exactly. They are doing that for competition reasons in the States versus Europe. But it just goes to show the confidence that exists in the battery pack from Kia, where they're able to extend the warranty up to 10 years in the US. And again, this does not mean you're going to replace the battery pack after 10 years. If every appliance is replaced once the warranty is over, we'd be throwing away stuff left, right and center. This is the warranty period, not how much it's going to last. Now we talk about battery cooling on this channel quite a bit because it's such an important feature that most reviewers miss out on. It's not only a safety feature, which ensures the battery doesn't overheat while in use, whether it be driving or charging, but it's also the feature that allows the batteries to last a very long time. As I've said so many times on the channel, this is the fault that our phones and laptops often have, which also use lithium ion technology. The fact that they're allowed to heat a bit uncontrollably at times actually degrades them faster. And it's not what we're seeing here in electric vehicles, because since they are maintaining the temperature of the battery while it is in use, they can ensure that it lasts a long time. And it's not something which we're sort of guessing on. This is proven now through years of research and years of actual experience on the road of cooled battery vehicles. So what is the cooling technology? Because that's another interesting thing. The manufacturers all sort of do something a bit different in this regard. Kia are using a liquid cooled system where the cooling circuit runs underneath the battery pack, just under those battery modules which we've spoken about. Now, the interesting thing that Kia are doing here is they have two cooling circuits and that's interesting and important. With one cooling circuit, what tends to happen is that a module at the front of the pack, from where the inlet is starting, gets better cooling than a module at the end of the pack. But not the case here. The two cooling circuits ensure that each of the different modules in the pack get a good amount of cooling altogether. Now, as we've said, there are various different models of this vehicle and they thus offer different ranges, not only with the battery size selected, but also the motors selected. So the range varies WLTP between 390 kilometers all the way up to 520 kilometers, which let me tell you, even the 390, the smallest end, uh, end of that buffer, is more than enough, particularly in a city-like driving field like we have here in Malta. And we always quote WLTP on the channel. That's an interesting calculation because that is a calculation that in Malta, with our driving conditions, no highways, low speeds, ideal temperature conditions, we do generally get close to, meet or even exceed in some cases the WLTP rating. I know the people overseas are going to get a bit pissed off at this because on the highways ranges of EVs decrease but here in Malta no highways so we actually do get the WLTP rating. Then again if you're a careful driver, if you're flooring it between one roundabout and another things will change. Now, another great feature of the Kia EV6, like we saw in the Hyundai Ioniq 5 video, it's sort of feature of this electric platform, is that you can get a vehicle to load adapter. Now, this is optional and it does cost a bit more, but oh boy, is it cool. It means you can stick an adapter on the vehicle, which thus allows you to power appliances from the car's high voltage battery, up to 3.5 kilowatts of appliances. So you're going to be powering quite a lot of things from this battery. So let's talk about regen or regeneration. This is the ability for the electric car to slow down 
and recharge its battery as it is decelerating. And what's more here in this vehicle, you can control the strength of that deceleration and charging from the pedal shifters found behind the steering wheel, the plus and minus on the left and right. And in the highest mode, you can actually activate what they call their eye pedal mode. Now this is very interesting. This is a one pedal driving experience. We've seen it on a few cars on the channel and I can assure you the electric vehicles which have it, I always turn it on right away because it is a driving experience like no other. And once you get used to it, you always want to have it. It is literally driving the car using just the accelerator pedal. Because as soon as you lift off, it will start to decelerate and come to a complete stop. It is an ideal scenario, particularly in high traffic situations, like is the case all the time here in Malta. Now under optimal conditions, because of its inherent 800 volt architecture, which is a rarity in the industry at the moment, this Kia EV6 can charge from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes. However, you are going to need a DC 350 kilowatt rapid charging station, which are available on the European charging network, just not here in Malta at the moment. But again, it achieves that on the correct charging station and under the correct temperature conditions. What does that mean? Well, in 2023, Kia released an update for their 2022 models, but also for all of the 23 models going forward. A battery preconditioning system. This means that when you've told the car that you need to, you're going to charge at a rapid charging station, it will start to do a battery cooling, particularly if it's in cold temperatures. It will heat up the battery to the correct temperature. So when you arrive at the charging station, you get a uh, all the power, so to speak, in charging. And this makes a huge difference. It's a 50% speed up difference. Now, most people are going to be charging this car on an AC home or street supply. Now, there are many different battery size options as we've spoken about, as well as many different power connections you can give to the car, which does change the charging time. So I'm going to give you the best case and the worst case scenario. So with that smaller battery, the worst case if, if, is if you're charging on that three pin plug. And that will be a 28 hour charge, larger battery that goes up to 38 hours. So far from ideal. If you're investing in this car, make sure you're investing in a type two home charger to speed up your charging times. Now on single phase, that will improve charging time, but well, you will see a big jump if you get a three phase supply which I do highly recommend, particularly with the larger battery option. On the uh, smaller battery, that three-phase supply will charge the car in around six hours. Larger battery, three-phase supply once again, eight-hour charge. I'd like to give a special shout out to Kia Malta and Motors Inc for supporting today's review, as well as Maverick for helping out with all the technical. And of course, you the viewer if you've learned something new today make sure you hit that like button and share this video with a fellow ev6 enthusiast or owner but as always i hope i've convinced you that the future is electric <laughs>